that a word of knowledge will not be quite enough to solve problem. This is where you will now need a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom will give you the ability to be able to properly apply the knowledge that you may have, that you may already have in a particular situation. That is where we have the word of wisdom. Um, like I think it was Baba, somebody said there that you can you go to school to acquire knowledge, but nobody there's no school, there's no university for wisdom. Wisdom only comes from God. But so at times when there's a word you speak and you're like, you reflect and you're like, ah, did I just say that? I don't know where that word came from. There have been situations I've spoken to people and I tell them that, do you know that all that I have said, I didn't even know where those words came from. And in my head, I want to reflect and say, like, Kemi, the word you told that person, can you see yourself in it? I want to believe that in such way, God, the, the, the way that God speaks to us, he gives us that word, especially when the words are in God. Um, let's look at the example of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was tempted, when Satan went to tempt him, Jesus Christ did not know whatever Satan was going to say. I want to assume. But when he, for every, every temptation that he brought, Jesus Christ was able to counter by the word of God. For me, I think that is an example of what, of word of knowledge is I already said that it can only and the word of wisdom can only operate if the word of God is in your life because Jesus I said word of wisdom is not importation of facts it is the supernatural impartation of faith it is knowing by the Holy Spirit it is knowing something by the help of the Holy Spirit God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the third one is the gift of prophecy. It says there, the gift of prophecy is when you get a direct word from the Lord that you usually give to someone else. And when I say a direct word, I mean the passage from the Lord that is given to you. Will leave. Okay, okay, it says... Okay, and when I say a direct word of God, I mean the passage from the Lord that is given to you will literally be word for word. It says, a word of prophecy, and I'm thinking, when we say word of prophecy, is it peculiar to only prophets? Can I ask a question? When we say words of prophecy, is it peculiar to, does it, do I have to be a prophet to speak a word of prophecy? No. Okay, so if we believe that we don't have to be prophets to speak the word of prophecy, then for everyone that has the gift of the Holy Spirit, their words of God will give you their word. At times you might be going through a particular situation, and maybe the word God will give you is, this shall also pass. You don't know where that word is coming from, but God will give you that word. It could be this shall also pass. I remember when I had the particular challenge. I don't know where that word, what I would always say is otisheshe. And it was a very dark situation that seemed as if everything was lost. Till today, my younger brother still come, ah, mommy came me otisheshe. Because even when I don't know it, my mom will say, even when I'm crying, and you say, ah, came me, I'll say, ah, otisheshe. That means it is well. And to the glory of God, it actually came. It, it, it came to manifestation. So when we say the word of prophecy, it will give you a word that will be in line or that can be aligned with what the Bible says, that you can actually put side by side with the word of God. It is not the word of man. If I say, ah, I know that I'm hopeful that if I sleep, I will wake. So if I say, ah, okay, we are believing God for the next day. But there are words that God will give you for a particular situation. And it could, it, the, the words might not find express meaning immediately. 
but a time will come when you say, yes, Father, I thank you. I remember you gave me this word, and the word is working. And oftentimes, if he gives you such words, I encourage you to write them down. Because the Bible will always say um, the vision is for an appointed time. Every word that God gives to you is always for an appointed time. Every prophecy has its time of manifestation. It says, do it, sorry, it will still come to pass. So I want to encourage us, and for as many of us that have the gift of prophecy, we should continue in prayer and ask God to increase it in our lives. And for as many of us that desire it, let's go back to God in prayer and ask. If we ask in faith, he will not deny us. He will give to us in Jesus' name. The fourth one is the gift of faith. It says here that the Bible tells us that we all have a set, certain measure of faith that has already been given to us by the Lord. God has to give each person a certain measure of faith or we will not be able to get saved. As the Bible tells us that we are saved by faith and through grace. The, the faith that is being spoken of in this point four is a faith that grows. If you look at the book of Hebrews, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is a faith that grows. But when I was studying, I realized there's another faith, which is, which is different from this measure of faith. Which is different from this measure of faith. And it is, it says, okay, it says, gift, okay, it's a God-given ability. To, it is a faith that we have to believe God for the impossible. It is quite different from this one that grows. But a situation happens and you just believe God for the impossible. At that point in time, you just believe him. For, and your faith is so hooked on to that belief that irrespective of what, just like the three Hebrew, the three Hebrew guys. They, there's, oh king, if you desire to kill us, we will still not bow. At that point in time, then it was not the faith that was growing. They had that faith. But at that point in time, they were manifesting in the, the gift of faith because they believed God for the impossible there and there. That, um, just like Esther, if I perish, I perish. So I wrote here that gift of faith is God-given ability to believe God for the impossible in a situation. It comes by the word of God for that situation. Queen Esther said, if I perish, I perish. And she went in to see the king, even when she was not meant to. May God help us all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fifth one is the gift of healings. He says, what this means is that at any time, the Holy Spirit can manifest the special gift through any believer. So he can heal someone of any kind of disease, illness, or sickness. We all believe that Jesus Christ is a great healer. But he says something. He said greater works we will do. So I want to encourage you. Every one of us, we have that grace. Every one of us, we have that gift. As long as we are in God and we believe that Christ is in us, it only says take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Let, if we, you, might, you might want to start with maybe what we call the slight headache. You headache, I command you out of my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If your faith is hooked on it, even if the head is pounding, and you keep saying, I've already told God you are out, and you refuse, you refuse to acknowledge it. And the truth is, you realize that if you, if you do that for yourself, Gradually, you have that confidence. Maybe your, your child comes and says, ah, I have too much ache. And you say, okay, let me lay my hands on you. And you pray for her. And you say, okay, go and sleep. And you go and check her. How are you feeling? And she says she's better. Ah, okay, now. We, you, we only graduate in it. Such, um, such that when you go out and you see people, I want to imagine the face when um, 
Peter was at the gate, at the beautiful gate, and the man saw them. It was the same Peter that was a coward. But they had received the power of the Holy Spirit, which we all have by our relationship with Christ Jesus. And, this, and even as the man focused on them, I'm sure something in him, something swelled up in him that you can do it. And he gave him, said, stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. At times, we just need to speak the word, and God will back it up. But most times, we are always scared of, ah, what if I declare it, and it is not so? But I'm going to encourage every one of us, including myself, let's take that step of faith and believe God that, God, if I say one, you will manifest. And God would help every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number six, page two, it talks about the gift of the working of miracles. Some of the different Bible dictionaries describe the word of miracles as the following. An intervention in the natural universe by God, a phenomena that transcends natural laws, a divine act by which God reveals himself to people. We all know what miracles are, but I tell people, miracles are God's acts. They are not magic. Now here we're talking about the working of miracles, just like um, Peter did with the man at the gate, beautiful. That was an intervention. It was, it was a divine act of God. Look at the man of 38 years by the pool. It was just a miracle. In every way, in one way or the other, God has done something in our lives. And in one way or the other, we all have that gift. It's just, I don't, I'm just believing that, even myself, I'm just, because when I started, when I started the study, I was like, God, I am nowhere. I am nowhere. And I, and I desire that even as we hear this word of God, God will let it increase in our hearts so that we will go out and begin to manifest in all of these things. The working of miracles, where you see somebody and you go and you're able to say, God, this is, you have this, my, my daughter will say, holy anger. And you have this holy anger and you're like, no, this cannot be. And you make a declaration. And you make a declaration and it happens. God has given it to every one of us. Every one of us. Because we have that relationship with it. But how are we using it? How am I using it? It is a challenge to me. Much as I'm saying it to everybody, it is also a challenge to me. And a result that God, you will, you, will, you will manifest it in my life. If Apostle Paul could manifest, because he, he manifested in all the different gifts, we also, we could do the same. And I believe that we will do the same in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number seven talks about the discerning of spirits. It says, this, what happens in this gift is that the Holy Spirit will give you supernatural discernment. The Holy Spirit will give you insight. The Holy Spirit of God will give you knowledge to tell whether someone is honest, is honest, sincere, or they appear to have a hidden agenda. Most times, we see, um, we see people and we think, ah. Something flashed my mind. When prophet, when Samuel went to Jesse's house and he wanted to anoint, he looked at the faces. But God was actually looking at the earth. At times we look at people's face and we assume we know what is in them. But I want every one of us to ask for the spirit of discernment. Because at times when somebody puts an act, you think it is of God. How are we able to draw the line? How do we know if it is, if it is of God or if it is of flesh? But God said that the, we, are be, we are made to understand that there is this spirit, there is this gift that God, God gives to his loved ones through the help of the Holy Spirit which is the discerning of spirit, and where you are able to know that. Yeah. I've been to a church where somebody has said, Oluwa, we pray, that God says the Lord, and the man of God stood up and said, no, God has not spoken. He said, no, God has not spoken. And even if we look at the case, um, the discerning of spirit, 
when um, the apostles, when the apostles, I don't know where they, I think I wrote it somewhere, it says, when a lady, a, a woman was going after them to say, ah, these ones have the spirit of God, and they had to say, of course she was saying the truth, but she was not saying it with the spirit, I think she was speaking with the spirit of witchcraft or sorcery, and she had to be shot, she had to, she had to be asked to keep shot. Yeah, that is one act of discernment. And also, if you look at the case of Cornelius, and is it Peter or Paul? He says, Peter, when God said, stand up, eat. He said, I will not eat. Um, what God does, um, I will not eat anything dirty. But the spirit of God in him made him discern that of a truth, Cornelius actually had the need of, of Christ. Because I think they were Jews and Greeks. But the spirit of God made him understand that he had the need and he had to go. He says, um, The discerning, this, the, the, okay, the, so he was able to discern that actually it was it was of God. So we need to we ask we need to ask God for that spirit to be able to discern, so that we are able to draw the line. And may the Holy Spirit help us in Jesus' name. He also talks about the different kinds of tongues. It says here that the gift of tongue is simply the Holy Spirit giving you the supernatural ability to speak in a foreign tongue, that you have no knowledge or ability to speak of your own. And for me, I think when we talk about tongues, the gift of tongues, there are some gift of tongues that you speak. When you're praying, you speak, uh, um, maybe you want to say it's a prayer, it's a prayer tongue. And, um, and I remember that in the upper, when the apostles were converted, the Bible says they spoke in different tongues. But people that were there understood the tongues they were speaking. We were speaking in, assuming they were speaking in Yoruba, speaking in French, people that have never spoke in such language. I think I've had, maybe it was Antelin that told me that one of these, maybe Bababa or Badari went to a particular country and he was speaking when it was time for him to mount the pulpit. As he opened his mouth, he spoke in the language of that particular country, which is also speaking in tongues because he wasn't speaking his language. And I know that God can help us, and he will help us, he will give us that grace in Jesus' name. He talks about the interpretation of tongues. They, for some people, the gift is someone who is able to interpret another tongue. And the interpretation of tongue, I think, in tongue, we, I, I'm not too sure if we so much practice it in CAC. But I know that in the White Garment Church, because I was privileged to have gone through with White Garment Church when I was much younger, um, especially K and S, yeah, somebody would speak in language and another person would actually how true it is i do not know but i know it is something that is done there but i don't know how it works only god does know, that knows how it works but if we have people that speak in tongues and the bible says some people he has given them the interpretation of tongues but if we desire it i know god will give to us in jesus name and it says here, yeah, the principles that support the gift of the Holy Spirit within the body of Christ is every Christian has one or more gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are not limited to a subgroup of believers. They are distributed by the Spirit to all Christian men, women, and children. Gifts of the Holy Spirit may be given at the moment of regeneration, but they may lie undiscovered and dormant for a long period of time. So it takes us, we have to take that step of faith to stir it up. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are God's spiritual equipment for effective service and edification of the body of Christ. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are given so that in everything, God will be glorified through Jesus. Whatever gift God has given unto you, don't become, yes, it is me. Always give the glory to God. Um, gifts of the Holy Spirit are given so that, oh, okay, sir. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are not the same as natural talents. Unlike the natural abilities which everyone has from birth, gifts of the Holy Spirit belong exclusively to believers in Christ. So if someone is outside and is able to prophesy or whatever, and the person is not a believer, that is not of Christ. And I know that God will help every one of us to discern such spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says the impact of the Holy Spirit on the church. 
The gifts of the Holy Spirit are part of the very nature of God, given to us from him to use to fulfill his purpose in our lives and on earth. The church is designed to function in harmony. The body of Christ is meant to function in the same manner that a physical body functions. The body is one and not many members, just like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The unity and interdependence of the body is an example of how gifts of the Holy Spirit influences the church. And in conclusion, it is written, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, our gifts of the Holy Spirit are ultimately designed to bring glory to God. This is your highest calling, and it relates to all the three persons of the Godhead. As you use your gifts of the Holy Spirit in conjunction with the power and fruits of the Holy Spirit, and in the name and lordship of Jesus Christ, the Father receives the glory. As we use our gifts of the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ will be edified, unified, and glorified. We will avoid deception by Satan and by wicked men, and we will grow in Christ Jesus. But above all, above growing. Let's think about heaven. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Was we blessed? Are you sure? Okay. So we're about to go into the question and answer section. But before we go into the question and answer, I would like to see how well we were listening. So I'm just going to ask, before I ask you what questions you have, I'm going to ask everyone, I'm going to ask a question and I'm gonna need nine people to answer it. So, um, like I say, can we put our book, our leaflet on the floor, please? I do not like cheaters. So, I believe Auntie, by the grace of God, God used her to bless us tonight, so I need to know that we have learnt. Is the paper away? I don't wanna mention name, but I can see two aunties with their papers in their hand. So the first question is, I want us to name the nine gift of the Holy Spirit, and I need you to elaborate on it. Who wants to go first before I call names? Thank you, Auntie. Hold on, Auntie. The first gift of Knowledge, yeah. And as the, our sister explained, this is not a, this is not a knowledge, you know, because it's a knowledge from God. Mm. It's it's a gift. It's not something because if you if you say that thing, it is beyond mm. even the speaker's understanding or comprehension. So it could only have been God that has given them that knowledge. Do we agree? Next person. Hey. Auntie, I saw you. Discerning, discerning, discerning spirit. Ask sister. Explain it. Yeah. Um, you, um, it is only spirit that can help you to, to discern mm. how somebody is. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever may be happening. Yeah in your vicinity or something that yeah. you know that you are not even aware of mm. but the holy is only for example where as you are now yeah. i've never met you before yeah. i'm seeing you for the first time but if i'm spiritually mind spiritually minded mm -hmm. it is the only spirit that, that yeah how you are yeah. what you know the kind of person you are mm -hmm. but if i do not have the power of the holy spirit people may be presenting people people may yeah. They may present as if they may yeah. Yeah. Go on. They may present as if yes, they are God's saints. Yeah. Their act may may um, how can I put it? Their act may may be deceptive. Yeah. So you know, so to say. The act may be deceptive, but it is on, the only spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, mm. when you have the discerning spirit, It'll then you. you are able to to know 
the kind of person uh, the, the, the kind of person that person is or whatever may be going on around you okay thank you next the gift of faith yes uh, she we t she talk about uh, uh, for example we should have faith that there were two faiths mm -hmm. the faith we saw in the Hebrew 11 one yeah. and the faith that we have like for example she gave that Esther said if I perish I perish that is a, a kind of faith that that will prompt us to uh, one of the gift of the spirit that we have and she also gave another example of um, um, uh, uh, Shedrach, uh, Meshach, uh, and Abednego. Abednego in the, in the fire that said they, they will not bow down for the king. So such faith that we should pray, ask for. Amen. Thank you. Next. Gift of wisdom. Yes. Sis, our sister said there's no faculty of wisdom in any school, any university. It's only God that can give us wisdom. Wisdom to design, like Daniel. We know God gave Daniel wisdom because uh, he was able to interpret the dreams of the king. Then God gave Joseph wisdom too. So we want wisdom from above so that we can, when we speak, they will know we're speaking like a wise person, not like a foolish one. So it's only the wisdom from God that can make us to speak, to judge, to counsel people yeah. with wisdom, not from our knowledge, because there's no school of, there's no faculty of wisdom anyway. Wisdom comes from God. That's why I say in James that if anybody lacks wisdom, so. let him ask for God that give liberally to everyone that asks. So we just need to ask for the wisdom. Everybody, every one of us needs wisdom, or else we just be living a foolish life. Go ahead, person. Thank you, Auntie. So wisdom is also the, ap the application of knowledge. So the ability to apply the word of God. Next person. Auntie. The gift of healing. Yes. <laughs> so since we are um, the children of God, uh, once the spirit of God manifests in us, we should be able to perform healing as well as said in John 14 12 that greater things we will do yeah. Yeah. the sun is spirit oh they've said that they've said that but interpretation of things oh, that is when somebody is giving um, I think our sister gave example that went to um, the white government church yeah they were <laughs> Thank you very much, Auntie. <laughs> that when she was, um, uh, uh, you know, in Kebu and Serafo, yeah. when somebody is prophesying, mm -hmm. like they're speaking in tongues, yeah. another person it's will be interpreting, interpreting it. Mm. And then that is not, it's not so much in CAC, and yeah. that, that's the truth. It's not so much in CAC. Yeah. But when you go to white government churches, even in Celeste, you see yeah. them, somebody will be speaking in tongues, another one will be interpreting mm. when they are talking to somebody else. Somebody else will be writing it down. Oh. So the, what, that's, that's the gift that we're supposed, as a Christian, that we're supposed to be asking for when somebody, because he said in the book of Acts, while they were speaking, people can recognize their own languages. Mm. And they're not from that country, but they can understand what they're talking about. That we as Christians, that we should be praying for it so that when people are speaking in tongues, we know what they, you know some people, I think Sister Flash, I gave an example here last yeah. week when she said somebody was praying for the signing of spirit yeah. for something else, yeah. but not to edify the church of God. Yeah. That we should be praying for that, the interpretation of. I've got a question on that, but I think I'll save it for when I finish with this. Thank you. Um, I think, how many do we have left? I think we've got two more. Yeah, two more. No, three more actually. Brother Joshua. Praise God. Uh, the gift of prophecy. Um, our sister explained that uh, the professor about stuff and things like that. But I look at it from another perspective. It gives you an insight into a situation. When the Lord gives you an insight into a situation, you speak it out. It's considered as what? Prophecy. That you, you foreseen the thing, 
before, like, let's say, for example, we're talking about the building of this church, you know? <laughs> Praise God. Rehabilitating of the church, for example. And you now see, the work, it now comes, the, a, a man of God now says, okay, I, huh? No, I'm telling you now, within the three, he said, by the years, three years from now, yeah. three years from today, this church will be refurbished. He has seen it, it has seen the in, internally, you've seen it inside, spiritually, then you now, you speak it out. Like, there was a gathering, there was a gathering, and a young man stood up and he said, and he told the man of God, be careful, the man of God, for the spirit of complacency, you know? He, he was saying it because the Lord gave, that's a, a prophetic word telling him of what things that are about to happen mm -hmm. or things that happen that you had no understanding of. Mm -hmm. And you begin to wonder, you, you're still in the midst of confusion and you begin to ask yourself, excuse me, what is going on? What, what is going on? And you begin to pray. You know, in situations like that, the Lord gives you an insight. And when he gives you an insight and it's spoken out, is a, and the thing manifests in, a, in line with the scripture. Mm -hmm. Because if the person gives you such a word and it's not in line with the scripture, then it's wrong. Amen. Amen. Yes. was this was years back this was years back on the journey on the journey on the journey from uh woolish arsenal a lady got on the train all she was saying on the train was basically a difficulty of getting the fruit of the womb a difficulty of getting the fruit of the womb he doesn't this this particular when the message come, came is it's a prophecy that does not mean that at that particular time that individual was a prophet so when the lady finished complaining, then the, the man that was sitting in front of her said, by this time next year, you will have the fruit of the womb. And according to the word of the Lord, by that time that year, the lady came with the fruit of the womb. That, you, you find out that that's quite different from when you exercise faith. He was speaking, are you getting me? The Lord spoke true. When the Lord speaks through you, through you, that is quite different from when you're exercising faith. When the Lord speaks through you, that is prophecy. As compared to when you stand on the platform of faith and you decree, they are two different things. Move to question and answer. <laughs> yes, I just want to add to what Brad Joshua said. Yeah, it is prophecy and I'm happy that our teacher said that it is not only the people that prophesy at the prophet. We are all prophets. This happened to us. Me and my husband were going to go. And since then, I, I am happy that I, I became a prophet. I was happy. <laughs> my husband would say, what have you seen again? I said, no, we were getting ready to go to Nigeria. It was two years ago. And I said, hmm, when we get to Nigeria, I did not know. I did not even think about it. I just said it, that we're not going to use this particular car. He said, why? But they fixed it. I said, I don't want us to, to use that car. Even when we got to Nigeria, I said, we're not going to use this car. Lo and behold, we had a terrible accident in that car. People could not believe. We were sitting at the side. People were saying, ah, the people in this car might have died. I said, we are here. We, we, we did not die. So he's a prophet. God will just lay it in your heart. And if you hold on to it, yes, it is, I think it is prophet. And when God is speaking to us, I pray for discerning spirit. I pray for listening ears. And like my sister said, say it out. There is power 
in the spoken words. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And what I'm saying that is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 said, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of, of things not seen. So that is faith. To me, do you understand? When somebody says, by Lolua, thus says the Lord. That's prophecy. But when I think about something to my life, because I'm telling you, a lot of people can testify to what I'm about to say in this assembly. I said to myself, I'm going to get married on so, so, so date. My husband was not here. He was in Nigeria. And Baba said to me that you cannot go to Nigeria. That you have to stay here. I have a, I have few people who can be witness in this church as they were sitting. And then I was telling myself, Baba took me to this room. Then this church, we're not using here. We were using the wall. He took me and he said, you cannot go to Nigeria. You have to stay here. I said, Baba, how am I going to do it? He said, Go and do it. And I said, on so, so, so date, I planned, which is so can be my witness. I planned the wedding myself. My husband was not here. He has never even taken the visa. And it happens on the day I said it. No, it's, it's about to say it. And one Praise house, one Praise house. Praise Thank you. Praise the Lord. I think, I think there is a crisscross here. If I focus on your example, the fact that you were speaking the word, you received that word from somewhere. Wait. No. When we say when, when, we, say, when we say we receive, when we say we receive, it doesn't mean that somebody said it to you. So you are standing and the spirit of God in you is kind of bringing up the faith in you. And you are now Speaking the word, you are confessing prophetically that this is what is going to happen. But your faith is tied to that prophecy. The same way when somebody says to when the prophet comes to me and says, Thus he heard the Lord. If I don't believe it, it might not come to pass. So there is there is there is that interwoven there. I hear what you're saying. That yes, your 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 by faith you are saying this will happen. But the act of saying it is the act of prophecy. And that's what we're saying. Teachers, evangelists, every now and then people, people, people prophesy without necessarily saying, thus saith the Lord. You receive a word in Rema and you speak it. It becomes a prophetic word for whoever we will. We, you know, hang on to it. Let it sink in. You know, you can say it. Very nice. Thank you, Pastor. Hold on. Yes, question is. Praise the Lord. This is question concerning the, 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 the Holy Spirit as well. I, I want to know because we were told that it's only by Holy Spirit we can once see vision and prophesy, yes? Okay. There, when I was in Nigeria, there is this, uh, I want to use drunker and a, a crisp person as, a, as an example. Yes? Praise God. There is this uh, man here, it's a coupon man. We call it coupon, those people that pray coupon. A gamble. So he lost that day, he was very drunk. He, drunk, he was drunk. Then my sister was going to put to bed, nobody knew. And, she, and he came, say, take her to hospital. He's going to have baby now. No, 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 no. Before he will finish saying it, she was in labor. We couldn't go to hospital and she had a baby at home. That is for number one. There is one for a crazy person, a, man, a mad woman. She was, she, was, uh, she was running. I'm talking about this prophecy because we are saying it's always, always through the Holy Spirit. I want to know how these two work out. This, this woman was, uh, is a crazy woman. And he's telling, that, he's, he's telling somebody... Uh, the other person that, uh, the, the one woman is telling her that, let, don't let that mad man, uh, that mad woman touch you. He said, if I touch, the, the mad woman is now saying, if I touch you, your, uh, your, your belly way they pay you. You go heal. Your belly way go pay you. You go heal. Instantly, the woman fell down and they say, my stomach, my stomach. You see, everybody and 
before you know it, the woman was saying she was, something had been there for years, like a boil and a bus. So how can we say about these two people? I want to know because I believe it's not the spirit of God, but the two incidents are true. How did it happen? Push huh? like. Sorry, man. Sorry, Sister Victoria. I know you are raising your hand. <laughs> you see, in everything that God has created, there is also a counterfeit. When you had, when, when Saul, when Saul had difficulty with Samuel, and Samuel passed on, he went to the wish of Edom. And the wish of Edom, Saul called Samuel for him. Are you getting what I'm saying, Sister uh, Queen? And he called, and he called the prophet. And when he called Samuel, and he said, "Okay, what is going to happen? Excuse me, what is going to happen in regarding to this battle with the Philistine?" And he said, "This is what is going to happen. This is what is going to happen within the battle of the Philistine." And it did happen. And so they died. But that does not tell you that that spirit, that thing, is from God. To every good, to everything that God has created, like I said at the very beginning, there's a counterfeit. Which, sorry, sorry to tell you, people possess with the spirit of witchcraft they see. People possess with the spirit of marine, with the marine spirit they see. And if you belong to some occultic organization, even in this country, you can see beyond the physical. But that does not make you the child of God that you are possessed with the Holy Spirit. That is why it comes into uh, descending of spirit. Because even though they descend, like when you go to some of these churches, some of these churches who do not believe, but because of that power, that extra power which they get from strange authorities, and they see things that you cannot see with your physical eye, and they, sometimes they happen, people become slaves to them, they fall victims to them. But thank God for the discernment of spirit that will enable you to differentiate. But you will see, it doesn't mean because we say Holy Spirit, just like the way the Holy Spirit revealed things, so the other, so Satan revealed things to those people who believe in him also. Okay, Sister Queen? Kresuma, we all know that she's not normal. Remember, the Bible said he can even raise up a stone. So if God can raise up a stone, that means there's evidence of truth in, a, in something like that. Because all these are cutting in you talk, they are human. They know what they are doing. But a crazy person and a drunkard, even when he uh, finished the drink, he did not even know what have happened to him. Do you understand? So, praise God, praise God. Um, to me, um, I believe God can use anybody. As uh, one of the things I was even going to say is what she said that God um, said, if we refuse to praise Him, He will raise a stone. So maybe if He spoke to a, maybe a, 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 a Christian at that time, somebody that is not drunk or somebody that is very perfect. Remember, um, lots of people we witnessed that they said God told them. Say somebody is ill or somebody has a problem, God put in the heart that, oh, they should go to that person and uh, maybe um, pray for them and they will be healed, but they resist it. So, uh, the, the, uh, this, um, even though there may be a, grand, a drunkard or the other person um, um, is a foolish, uh, how crazy or whatever you say, God, for me, God can use anybody um, to, to fulfill whatever his purpose is. It is for us to be very careful. We should not put in our mind that, oh, this is the best, like, like Jesus, uh, people, um, the Jewish, they, they, they were expecting somebody that will come from a big family and have a lot of riches or whatever. They just uh, visualized <laughs> how they, they want the God to be. But God just used another way that is a foolishness to, 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 to the world. But this is how God wanted it to be. 
So for me, God can use anybody, whether it is a rich, a poor, or a very dirty person, or somebody that you don't even consider. We have to be really, really careful. We don't know where our healing or our breakthrough will come uh, through. That's how I see that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to look at the book of Acts chapter 16. Verses. Acts chapter 16, and it says, And it came to pass as we went to. Auntie, the mic. No, she's not. Hear me. What am I The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. And this did, did she many days. And Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. What I want us to understand is the fact that anybody can speak. But the Bible says we should test every spirit. Um, only two more contributions. That's Evangelist Odufuwa and Evangelist Adeleke, and we'll wrap it up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Before Evangelist Odufuwa. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I watch a film. The film is called Leap of Faith. I don't know if anybody watches it. It's on the YouTube. You can go and watch it. This guy, he just want, is, a, is a crook. And there was this town, there was no rain. They didn't have rain for seven years. And this guy went to that town and said to them that by this time tomorrow you have rain. And lo and behold, it rains like mad. And then the guys, and another one, they brought, he said they should bring all the disabled in that town to him. Go and watch it. It's on YouTube. It's leap of faith. They brought every, I'm telling you, and he healed all of them. There is no diabolical, nothing diabolical about it. And there's another one now that is, I watched the day before yesterday, I was with Sister uh, Shade. The film is called Daddy G.O. This guy will see dreams. It will, whatever he says come to pass, the guy doesn't know God. And God was using him. There's nobody, God used Rahab. There's nobody God cannot use. Okay. Not that they're not diabolical. God will use whatever he wants to use for anybody. Thank you. Mom, one minute. Say one thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to comment a little bit in contribution to where everybody has comment on the gift of this Holy Spirit. One thing I want to drop to our spirit is that this gift of this Holy Spirit we are talking today, the spiritual gift, is for the believer only. And all this gift is given to us to edify the, the church. And Every gift, like knowledge, wisdom, it comes at a particular time it's needed. And the moment, let's say something wants to happen now, it's just like a prophecy. Prophecy doesn't come all the time. And it's for the church. It's given for a particular person. Then let's say faith as well. Faith, is the, that faith we are talking about gift, is not if you have right, not the faith that saves. It is not the growing one. It's a faith that you need at a particular point in time. If you have the gift, it will manifest at that point in time. All the next gifts here, before I go to that of Sister Queen, if you have it, it comes, it will decide, but it will be using through you at a particular point in time. It's not everybody that have it. If you haven't had, baptized with the Holy Spirit, you don't have it. But it's given here. It is given. That's why I thank God the way they uh, put this in sequentially. You know, last we talk about Holy Spirit. If you are not being baptized with the Holy Spirit, forget about this gift. This gift that you are going to be using is through the gift of the dead. Another thing is that all the one that Sister Kung was telling me is about God can use anybody, but that doesn't mean he has that gift. God wants to use that particular at that point in time. That's it. And that is end. It will never come back again. But when it comes to spiritual gift, for the body of Christ, so it's being used at a particular point in time 
for a particular reason to build ourselves up. To if you go, let's go home and read First Corinthians chapter two, that twelve and fourteen. We we'll see that all this gift is for the believer and believer only, and to bless our life. If you want to use it outside, maybe God wants to use to draw the person into the kingdom of God, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We thank God for the time spent in the presence of the Lord tonight. Shall we rise up and pray unto the Lord for his blessings? Oh, people have eaten into my time. I've been, been given 10 minutes now. I have five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> God bless us all in Jesus name. So we are going to we are going to we are going to thank God. We are going to thank God for the opportunity that we have had tonight the grace that has been, that has been bestowed upon us for coming into his presence to learn at his feet and we have learned we have learned a great deal and we have we what well, I believe that everyone has been blessed tremendously tonight. I am well, I'm speaking for myself. I have been blessed. Let us go before let us thank God for all the blessings that we have received tonight. We have, we have, we have been taught. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, O Lord God, for the, for the blessings that we have received tonight, O Lord. Glory be to your holy name, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verse... Uh, uh, sorry. Romans chapter 8, where basically it says, those who have, um, those who have been, pre that, uh, that we have predestined, and we, we, those who have been called, have been predestined, and they have they, they that have been predestined, predestined have been uh, glorified. So therefore, we are going to go before the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for counting me worthy to be among the ones that walk in your that, 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 that even came tonight to, to learn at your feet. For counting me worthy to be among the ones to, to, for making me relevant to walking to, to work for you. Let us go before the Lord and say, Lord, uh, and continue to thank God. Father, Lord, I thank you. I worship you, O Lord God. I bless you. I honor you. I adore you, O Lord God. I glorify your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord God, for making me relevant. We have heard about, about the gifts of the Spirit, and they are only for us believers. Thank you, O Lord God, for, for, for making me a believer. For 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 being, for, for making me the way that you have made me. You have made me in your own image. And now I am in your presence, learning at your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your own, to your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have learned tonight. The night gifts of the Holy Spirit for the edification, exhortation, and comfort of the church, which is the body of Christ. We have been taken through um, all the, the nine gifts of the Spirit, as it is um, explained, uh, you know, in detail in, in the Bible. Uh, the nine gifts are the word of knowledge, the first one, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the, work of, the working of miracles, the discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongue. I want you, well, I, want, I, I believe that we all know that none of us can operate in any of these gifts unless by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we have heard, that they are for us, that they are for, that, that they are for us believers. But if, we, but if we are not operating in the, you know, in the power of the, if, they, if, if there is no Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling in, in us, if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot operate in any of them. So therefore, we are going to say, Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you have, that you have given me. 
Your, my life has been filled with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the reason that I'm able to operate in these gifts. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my heavenly Father, oh Lord God, I thank you. I thank you, oh God, Lord, oh Lord for, for filling me, for filling me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because without the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm not able to operate. In any, no, none of us is able to operate in any of these gifts. Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, O oh Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to your holy name, O oh Lord. Forevermore we have prayed in Jesus' name. All these gifts, as I said, we, are, we can only operate in them if we are, you know, led by the Holy Spirit. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are going to ask for more power. We are going to ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because with, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do. You can do a lot. There is nothing that you cannot, that, you know, that, that, that you cannot do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, say, Lord, Father, fill me anew and afresh with the power of the Holy I want to be filled to the brim. That I, want to, I, I even want to be drunk with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, ha, no, no power of darkness can operate anywhere you are, in the vicinity where you are. Father, I want to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. And you are not fresh. Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, oh Lord, I want to be able to operate, and I want to be able to operate, oh Lord, according to your will, according to your will, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, I want to operate in Holy Spirit, I want the Holy Spirit to order my steps in anything, in, 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 in anything that I do, in all my endeavors, I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, whatever comes out of my mouth, ha, is, is, is is ordered by the Holy Spirit. My actions, my actions should be guided by the Holy Spirit. Even, even wherever I go, as I take any step, every step that I take to be ordered by the Holy Spirit, Lord, fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In conclusion, here, as our mother um, that, uh, the, the author of this, um, uh, of this teaching tonight has put it. Um, is, she said, according to 1 Peter 4, um, 10, uh, 10 and 11, our gifts of the Holy Spirit are ultimately designed to bring glory to God. This is, a, this is a, a, your, our highest calling, and it relates to all three persons of God, of the Godhead. As you use these gifts of the Holy Spirit in conjunction with the power, uh, with the power of the fruit, especially love uh, of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of the Lord, uh, Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Father receives the glory. Ah, Father, the, the, the prayer point here is that, Father, help me, empower me. As I as I am being led by the Holy Spirit, as I as, as I am operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, with this power, with, with, I mean, with with it with it with it with this, uh, with the gifts, with the gifts of the Holy, um, with, the, with 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 these gifts, Lord, Lord, I pray, let Your name alone be glorified in my life. In the name of Jesus, let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let me continue.
continue to, to, to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit in conjunction, in conjunction with this power, that, with, the, with, with, the, with the fruit of the Spirit. With the, let, let, the, let, let the fruit of the Spirit uh, be manifest in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, as, as the, Spirit, as the, the, the fruit of the Spirit are uh, manifesting in my life. And I'm using this in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. Lord, let your name and your name alone be glorified in my life. Father, let your name and your name alone be glorified in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I do not want to operate in the flesh. I do not want to do anything in the flesh. But to be led by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and in so doing, in so doing, your name alone shall continue to be glorified in my life. This is what I am asking for, oh Lord. This is my request. Oh, this is my honest request to tonight, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I know you are able to do it. You are able to do accordingly, oh Lord. You are able to do abundantly. Even more than we can ask or think. Lord, I ask, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your name alone shall, be, that shall continue to be glorified in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our Father and our God, Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, O oh Lord God, we thank you because, you. because you are the entrance of the world, and you are the world itself. We thank you, O oh Lord God. We honor you for the power, for the, for the grace that you have bestowed upon us tonight, O oh Lord God, to come and land at your feet. And we have learned a great deal. We have, been, we, we have received blessings tonight. Lord, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Be thou exalted forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord God, that which we have learned, oh Lord God, we ask uh, that you, that you, as, as they have been planted in our lives, oh Lord, that they will yield good fruits, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, and they will benefit our lives, and the, and your glory, and your glory, and your glory, and your glory alone shall continue to manifest in our lives. Glory be to your holy name, oh Lord. As we are going to home tonight, oh Lord, we ask, oh Lord, that you be with us, that your presence will continue to be with us, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's um, Sunday school day, 7 to Sunday school review, 7 to 9. Friday is 1st of March, power of prayer. So 7 to 9, 30 or 7 to 10, as the Lord directs. Saturday is 1st Saturday of the month, victory day, month 3. Trinity, so come Saturday from 9 to 12, and Sunday is two services. The Lord, bring water to, bring to water Friday, Baba. Yes, so bring water on Friday. The Lord bless us. Amen. And Sunday is two services, so please, let's spread the word, and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's take one prayer point. Let's remember the angel of this church, Baba Medaishi, that wherever he is now, that the power of God will rest with him, uphold him, and strengthen him. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift your servant into your holy hands. We say, Lord, uphold him, uphold him, uphold him, guide him in the name of Jesus. Give him strength, give him knowledge, give him understanding. Let him receive perfect direction from you. And let him direct the church. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Let's thank God on behalf of everyone that has worked tonight, that the Lord has used, and even yourself for all the contributions. Say, Lord, empower me. Let these giftings that you have deposited in my life, let them begin to manifest at the appropriate time as we are required. Let us pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to bless your name. We thank you. For the gift that you have deposited in our life, we pray, O oh Lord, that at the appropriate time, at the set time, the gift we begin to manifest. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore.